Good afternoon, YouTube. My name is Flight Some Guy, and I suppose I was premature in saying that I fixed my FSX boxed because the damn thing crashed on me shortly after I took off on my uh, flight I was trying to record. So here I am in Steam again. All right, so what I'm doing is uh, this is an impromptu flight. A shout out to a friend of mine who has some land up in Michigan. Um, got it real good deal per acre and I asked her how long it took to drive up there she said seven hours and I said you know what you can keep that I'm not interested in making that longer drive to go visit or spend some time camping at land that far away but I will make a flight and flight simulator so Betty this flight is for you alright this is the Embraer Freena 100 my favorite personal jet we're gonna go ahead and fly this bad boy to uh, airport Oscada Wurtsmith, which is on the lake in Lake Michigan. And as I said before, I'm still shaking out the bugs in my box. I haven't been able to uh, do a successful flight in quite a while. So in the meantime, I'm just going to have to use Steam. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, uh, I already burnt 20 minutes, so see if I can make up the time. All right, Betty, this one's for you. unit okay no takeoff flash no takeoff break All right, I already, I already got a weather briefing on my previous failed attempt, so I know to take off from runway four. I guess I should call for uh, clearance. And um, uh, to the north. Welcome round, Embraer, Foxtrot, Sierra, Golf, Sex, Niner, ready to taxi, north, departure. Embraer, Foxtrot, Sierra, Golf, Sex, Niner, taxi, to and hold short of runway four. Alright. Taxi two and hold short runway four. Using taxiway Charlie Alpha Alpha four. Embraer Golf Sex Niner. And my INS isn't aligned as yet. So I'm gonna have to do without setting up my PFD. really bothers me that my boxed isn't working yet because I don't have my easy dock there we go don't you dare crash on me alright so we'll go ahead and get the same speech again in between flying my uh, tours. Right now I'm doing the Florida tour. I went from Columbus to Atlanta. Next one's going to be from Atlanta to Fort Lauderdale. Um, I have taken up the B757. I'm going to start learning that one. Um, largest jet I was flying to date was the big little jet or the little big jet, whichever one you want to call it. The Embraer E195. And I just needed to up my game, so I tried out the Quality Wing 757, which I had in my uh, hangar for a long time. Uh, when you see a plane as the number five, or in the top five, uh, selling add-ons at the uh, e-commerce website for several months in a row, there's got to be something good to it. So I went ahead and uh, fired that up and flew it around for a little bit, and it was a lot of fun. So. Um, 
I went ahead and purchased the Captain Sim 757 primarily because it's a much more realistic implementation. The Quality Sim 757 is a more dumbed down implementation. Now, when I say dumb, that's not to impugn the quality of the software. It's an outstanding package. They just want to make it for uh, average simmers to just get in there and, and go. And uh, it gives you some complexity, some realism to make things more interesting, but um, they've simplified a lot of things. And I like my sims to be a little bit more challenging. So I'm working on that. And uh, I'm also building out some DCS videos. Uh, no flight or combat missions per se, but uh, playing with the mission editor, Bell Geode is teaching me how to build missions with the mission editor. So that's what I've been up to. And I uh, spoke to a friend of mine. Like I said, I want to go ahead and do this flight just to see what it's like to uh, go to her property in Michigan. This flight is 270 miles, and this plane is going to be about an hour. And the weather at my destination airport is fair, no, nothing to report, nothing significant to report. And the weather here in Columbus, there's some pop-up thunderstorms, but as you can see, uh, it's manageable. Uh, the Windows 10 update, uh, I still haven't been able to fly a good clean mission with uh, Box, but Steam seems to be working fine. All right, let's go ahead and call. Get my people to go. Make sure I'm recording. Take off. Okay. All right, we're good to go. Takeoff configuration is good. Okay, thank you, Active Sky Next. Also, uh, I purchased the latest version of Active Sky Next 2016. We'll see how that works with this flight. Shoot, my frames are really, really bad. That's no good. Okay, that message is on the screen way too long. Alright. Got good acceleration. Okay, at about 105 I can rotate. Pilot, heading, ready for speed. Gear up. Embraer, Golf 6 Niner, you are leaving my airspace. Up. Frequency change approved. Okay. Oh, this is up too high. Okay, what's the problem here? problem here. I thought I turned my autopilot on. Okay, well, I'll fly it manually while I get up there. Heading is activated. Thought I had it on. There it goes. Flaps up, gears up, I'm clean. And I'll set.
frames have improved somewhat. Alright, we're getting tossed around with some turbulence, so let me go ahead and Train lower. Transition altitude. I'm ready to climb. Come up the gas a little bit. I was reading Barry Schiff's book, Volume, f volume 3, dealing with turbulence. And he said, with turbulence, what you want to do is ease up on the speed. That way, when, the, uh, when you get tossed around, less stress on the airframe. So, I'll continue my climb. Uh, wow. This is no good. Precipitation. At 18,000 feet? That doesn't sound right. Alright, turn on some... Anti-ice. Um... Wow, weather here is a lot more unpredictable than I thought. That said, the new version of Active Sky Next does talk about. Whoa. Alright. Does talk about. Uh, does talk about enhancements that makes flying storms and whatnot much more dangerous. I'm in the clouds at 19,000 feet. It looks pretty clear. I should not be going through all of this. I don't have a weather radar on here. Ooh. That's what it looks like. And this is not clear air turbulence. There's no clear air. It's all cloudy. Yeah, so this is pretty bad turbulence. Um, what should I do? Sort of look at what's doing on the outside. Twenty-one thousand feet. This this isn't right, is it? If with a thunderstorm at this altitude, I would have clearly seen thunderstorm clouds. These are not thunderstorm clouds. Of course, this was a real flight. Everyone, including me, would be throwing up by now. I am well above the clouds. I'm. St Still seeing flashes of light. There must be a uh, lightning. It must be happening at the clouds below me. Alright. Nice and clear now. Some flashing off the distance there. But still, that's below me. Right, nice and smooth. Speed is coming off. Let's go ahead and lower the vertical speed. Active Sky Next 16 new weather updated decoded text for weather for KMNN wind 180 at 16 visibility 10 statute miles clouds few at 4400 broken at 14,000 temperature 26 dew point 22 precipitation moderate rain altimeter 30.02 thunderstorm in the vicinity so what Active Sky Next 2016 does is when it downloads a new a weather file to put into the weather engine. It tells you what it is, which is kind of sort of cheating. So I'm going to have go, go into Active Sky next and turn off that feature. Let me see what the winds aloft report is for this particular flight plan. Let's go to brief. And I just generated it. I know there's a winds aloft section. Let's go ahead and take a look. We are at 27. Uh, let's see here, wind information, 27 is about uh, 310, 
to 6 8 at 38. Alright, so according to this, I'm getting a wind from the west at 28 knots. And according to the weather report, it's 260 at 26. Wow, this thing is very, very accurate. See, my thing is frozen again. That, that should free it up. There it goes. Yeah, the Active Sky Next is, uh, does a pretty good job of uh, replicating it. I'm looking at the, uh, the wind information at this altitude, and it's spot on. Alright, so we're right here, and this doesn't do a good job of showing it, but it's got to be Lake Michigan right there. Let me look at the map. Ohio, yep, that is, uh, no, that's Lake Erie. Yeah. So this right here is Lake Erie. So if we look outside, that's Lake Erie right there. Which means Cleveland should be along the coast back here somewhere. Alright, we're approaching our cruising altitude. And another lesson from Barry Schiff's proficient pilot. Once you reach a cruising altitude, don't immediately come back off the throttle. Let it sit there for a while and settle down. Climb or increase it. Let it speed up to your cruising speed, and once you've uh, gotten at that point, then you can come back on the throttle. So I'm going to let it sit here for a little bit. It's approaching 32,000. This is obviously stuck again. I'm moving the map. Nope, there it goes. There is a major airspace I'm coming up on. And since we're up here, the air is clear. Not much turbulence. frames and it's time to cut another track and there's the Toledo airport in fact let me confirm that's our nearest airport or that could be Detroit um, doesn't say W. Uh, doesn't say. But based on the proximity, it could be Detroit. Uh, Detroit's right on the ocean or the lake. Let me see here. And this airport. Yeah, it could be Detroit. I'm not sure if it looks like it though. Yep, it's, I'm right on top of it, and it's the closest airport. Yeah, that's not here. That's not Toledo. That's Detroit. Okay. All right. What do we got here? Is looking at the uh, VFR chart. All right. So there's one runway, 24 and six. Um. Weather report for KOSC is winds are 1180 at 9. The barometer is 2997. No significant weather, good visibility. So um, let's see if there's a tower. Alright, so. 180 winds coming from the south, so I have 6 and 240. I'm going to come in at 24, and ILS, the localizer frequency for 24 is 108.5. Alright, let's go ahead and start planning our approach. Um, we're well within 100 miles, so I can go ahead and start dialing a lower altitude and the uh, airport elevation is 600 feet so let's go ahead and dial this down to about 15,000 actually I can go ahead and bring it back to 25% vertical speed Take it down to about 2,600 feet per minute. 
And while it's doing that, I'll dial in a lower altitude, 15,000. And the weather looks absolutely perfect. And yeah, I should get there, no problems. All right. 24, 108.5. Let's go ahead and dial in the frequency for nav 1. Uh, 108.5 is already there. There we go. And there is Lake Michigan right there. Be at the airport off to our nine o'clock. Let's take a look, see. It's below those clouds. Yeah, we're we're going into perfectly clear weather. This is awesome. And by the time we get there, the sun should be approaching the horizon. Um, two four zero. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to be landing into the sun. Sun rises in the east, which is a zero nine zero. Sets in the west, which is two seven zero. So maybe I should land on runway six. Um, hmm. Let me think. That makes perfect sense. You don't want to land going into the sun. I want the sun in my back. All right. So let's change our landing approach. We want to land on runway six. Runway 6 does not have uh, an ILS or localized or glide slope. What it does have is a VOR station that I can use to do a uh, non precision approach. 116.1. Uh, and according to this, the weather is perfectly clear, so I, don't, I shouldn't even need that, but I'll go ahead and dial it in anyway. 116.1. And we just passed one hour. Okay, so it's making sense to me now. The airport that I'm going to be landing at is going to be over here somewhere. Or here. Point is I'm gonna have to go over open body, but this does not show that. Maybe if I turn on topography. And there it does show it. There's the airport right there. Let's see how we look on the outside. steep descent angle. Alright, we're approaching 6,000 feet. We're 37 miles out. That looks good. And let's see where the sun is. It's approaching the horizon. Precisely as planned. keep our approach speed around 150 to 160 knots and at some point I'm going to have to turn off um, my navigation by the FMS in fact I can do that now so let's go ahead and set this here switch from nav to heading there we go course it should line up right about there perfect and I can go ahead and switch 
back to the VOR station, which is fine. All right, we're at 29 miles, coming up on 3,000. This is perfect. Okay, we're 22 miles. If I was on a big jet, like a 757, at this point I'd start uh, making my turns, but this is a much smaller plane. This plane is a micro jet. Essentially, it's a small plane with jet engines. What that means is it handles like a prop even though it's powered by jets. So you can get away with stuff like making your turns when you're much closer to the airport. So I'm going to go ahead and give it, uh, let's see, it says here 20 nautical miles. I can wait another couple minutes. 19 miles. Eighteen miles. And that's probably the airport right there. Alright, so let's make this fun. We're gonna come left heading two four zero. Damn it. Heading. And I'm going a little bit too fast. So what I wanna do is slow down. There come off the gas about 10 percent that's gonna slow down my airspeed like so this needle is gonna go off a little bit at about 140 I'll drop first notch of flaps there you go flaps one want to keep ourselves in the air, so let's give us a little bit more gas. There we go. And then I'm going to turn this needle, my course, to 060. Uh, right here. And as you can see, that line in the middle is going off. What's going to happen is, I'm flying away from the airport. The runway is parallel to me, but I'm flying away from the airport. Let's see if I can show that here. Right, I'm right here. There we go. Here's the airport. The runway is this way, and I'm flying this way. And I am 17 miles away from it, so I can easily make my turn now. So I want to keep my speed at about a little bit too fast. Let me go ahead and come off the gas a little bit. Slow me down some. At this point, I can make my first 90 degree turn. From 240 to 330. Oh, that's a course. Over here. So I'm going to turn right. My speed is getting awfully low. So, we'll give it some gas. And according to this, I'm 18 miles out. Now, the airport is off to my right over here somewhere so what I want to do is I can use this map to help me I'm gonna oh, you wanna stall give it gas okay got close to stalling there now I need to turn right to heading zero nine I'm sorry uh, zero one zero And I'm at flaps 2. Let's go ahead and give it flaps 3. And then once this needle starts moving to the center, that means I'm intercepting the 060 radio for the ASP uh, VOR station. And then I'll turn the aircraft to heading 060 and that will line me up with the runway in theory. And I have not lowered my landing gears yet. As a general rule, I don't lower my gear until I can actually see the airport. The airport is over here somewhere. Let's take a look from the outside. And there it is right there. I don't like to lower my gear until I have visibility on the runway. In other words, I want to see the runway first. That's just a personal, personal habit. Beautiful sunset. See how that looks on the outside. I've got one notch flaps. Actually, that's two. 
That should get me lined up perfectly with the runway. Oh, wow. Alright, I wasn't expecting that. Alright, at this point, the autopilot is coming off. Autopilot. Autopilot. Gear is coming down. Didn't realize I was that close to the airport. And we want my runway. Alright, 3,000 feet. Let's trim properly. That should give me one more notch of flaps. Flaps full. Is my gear down? Yeah, gear is down. Full flaps. I'm coming a little bit fast. So I'll come off the gas. Lead off some speed. I should be landing at around 105, between 102 and 105. A little bit fast. But I'm at full flaps. And my gear is down. So that should slow me down sufficiently. Not only that, this is a pretty long runway. It's almost 10,000 feet. So I have plenty of room for error, so to speak. Okay. Now I did not call uh, or request a, uh, permission to land or whatnot. There is no tower at this airport, and I didn't see any significant traffic, so I figure I'll just take it in. And it's been stuttering like this a little bit. I'm not sure what that's all about. Okay, I want to watch my airspeed. I want to stall just before I land. just happened what the hell okay all landing gear it looked uneven when I came down okay, something is not right here <sighs> flaps up and as you can see with the graphics the it was stuttering a little bit. <sighs> I really regret upgrading to Windows 10. I really do. It wasn't doing any of this before. At least Steam doesn't crash on me, but stuttering like that is almost just as bad. Alright, so the sun is uh, beneath the horizon. It's a little bit darker. That's why we have this cockpit. Flaps up. Let's go ahead and la uh, park somewhere. And I'm going to run the replay and see what the devil happened. Alright, let's go ahead and park by one of these buildings. Let's go ahead and park by this building right here. This flight, uh, the landing is not what it should have been. Um, had me thrown off there but it is what it is and I have some more debugging to do unfortunately alright let's go ahead and power this thing down engines off lights off parking brakes on turn these lights off off Flaps up, battery is off. And there should be a sun right back over there somewhere. Alright, so Betty, this is your flight. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I feel bad about having to do less than, I don't want to say perfect, but decent quality videos. But in the meantime, 
I have to work with what I have. So I try. I'll still try to get this thing fixed. Anyway, flight sim guy here. Thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next time.